With Iowa and New Hampshire in the rearview mirror, Nevada is the next stop in the race for the Democratic nomination. Like Iowa, it uses a caucus instead of a primary. But unlike Iowa, Nevada allows residents to vote early. Some of the caucuses happening on Saturday will be in casinos. Unfortunately, we weren't able to make it down to Nevada this week, so we're at Empire City Casino by MGM Resorts in Yonkers, New York. But you get the picture. Nevada's pretty different from the first two states to vote. So here are some things to keep in mind about Nevada voters as they prepare to weigh in in the Democratic primary. First of all, Nevada is booming. It has one of the fastest growing populations in the nation, which means it's attracting people from other states and abroad, and Nevadans are having more kids. 13% of adults in Nevada were actually born in the state. That's by far the lowest number of all the states. So when we talk about Nevada voters, we're also talking about transplants from across the country, particularly California. When newcomers move to Nevada, they're often settling down in cities. Nevada is the third most urbanized state in the country, behind California and New Jersey. 94% of Nevadans live in urban areas, with almost three quarters living in the Las Vegas metro area alone. American politics are increasingly divided by geography, with urban areas and inner suburbs becoming more blue, and outer suburbs and rural areas becoming more red. Nevada is also an ethnically and racially diverse state. In fact, it's one of five states in the nation that's majority minority. About 30% of Nevadans are Hispanic or Latino, while about 10% are African American and about 9% are Asian. White caucus goers still made up the majority of caucus attendees in 2016 at 60%, while Hispanic caucus goers made up 20%. Overall, the Democratic electorate in Nevada is pretty similar to the Democratic electorate nationally. Another aspect of Nevada that ties it to Democratic politics are its unions. Nevada ranks eighth in the nation for the percent of its workforce that's represented by unions, at 16%. Unions in Nevada can play an important part in the caucus process by endorsing a particular candidate and turning out its members on caucus day. This year, however, the Culinary Workers Union, the largest union in the state, declined to endorse anybody. While Nevada has trended Democratic in recent years, like New Hampshire, it also has a history of libertarian policies. It's one of only seven states in the country without an income tax, but it goes quite a bit further than that. It's the only state in the nation where prostitution is legal. It's only one of two states where casino-style gambling is legal statewide. And if you've heard of the term Arena divorce, it's because historically Nevada has had the most lenient divorce laws in the nation. In fact, during the first half of the 20th century, women moved to Reno specifically to get divorced. And perhaps that sense of female empowerment has stuck. Today, Nevada is the first and only state in the nation where women make up a majority of the state legislature. So when it comes to Nevada's voters, they're used to voting for women. One last thing to know about Nevada is it's historically hard to poll. So who knows? A dark horse candidate could hit the jackpot. Remember to subscribe to 538 on YouTube.